Hello, today we're going to talk about what is probably the single most important question for you to answer and to resolve when it comes to the other questions of how do I improve myself and how do I attract to myself things in my life that I think I want, such as relationships or money or good jobs or what have you. And it's this. But first, let's have a look at some imagery because it really sets the stage and evokes within us some of the things that we're talking about. Now have a look at this cup here. The cup is standing steadfastly, straight up, strong, resilient, next to water, and water is overflowing from the cup. Historically, for thousands of years, water has, in mystical terms, represented the emotion, the feelings within the person. And we can see on top of the cup what appears to be either a castle or a mansion, at the very least. And that suggests that there is great fullness of emotion, great, great abundance of emotional well-being. Well, that image, esoterically, also represents this. It represents pure potential. It represents the quantum wave of probability and possibility that you can bring into your life by aligning yourself with the energy of the universe and with what the true task of your soul is in this life. The question first becomes, who am I? Who do you believe you are? Well, the things that inform your belief come from a couple of, couple of places. They come from what you tell yourself, and they come from what the external world tells yourself. Now, let's look at the idea of telling and speaking and thoughts, because speech is just the, the manifestation of thought. Let's look at another image. In this image here, we have what appears to be, on one view, some ordered, ordered lines which are pierced by a couple of swords, or people can, on the other hand, as they have very often said, well, this can represent chaotic thinking. It can represent thinking which is detrimental to the person. In fact, to go further, many people in the mystical arts for thousands of years have associated images such as this with self-doubt, self with negativity, with a, a, a self-destructive negative loop in the mind, which uh, is always bringing the person down, such as, I'm not good enough, I can't do this, someone else is better than me, I'll never be able to get that, I, can't, I don't have enough money, my background doesn't allow me to get where this goes. Things such as that nature. The other thing which this card represents is still thoughts, but thoughts which come from external sources. And the question that you need to ask yourself is this. Who do you believe? Do, do you believe yourself? Or do you believe the thoughts that are expressed by the outside world? Because you need to understand your subconscious doesn't know the difference between what is real and what is not real. It just takes information in and absorbs it. There's no filter there as to whether it's right or wrong. It takes it in and then it uses it. It basically says, this is what I have to work with. This is what I'm going to produce. So you need to understand that when you self-talk yourself down, you are programming yourself for failure, for unhappiness, and for destruction. Now, the thing about external thoughts is this, and again, look at this card. Externally, understand that the world that we live in, and I've got nothing against the world that we live in, 
It's always bombarding you with thoughts, and in particular with thoughts that are necessary to sell products and services. If you're anything like me, then you understand that on social media and mass media such as television or radio, we're always being bombarded with advertisements. Now advertisements work by doing this. They do, they, they, they set out to generate three things, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. They want to make you fearful that if you don't take the product or service, then something bad will happen. They want to make you feel uncertain about what's going to happen in your life unless you bring the product or, or service on board to take away that uncertainty. Or it wants to give you doubt. Doubt in yourself. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not slim enough. My clothes aren't good enough. I need to have designer clothes. I, I need to have a new model phone. The iPhone 5 is no good anymore. I have to have this one. Understand this, that those doubts that are being portrayed to you are intended to force you to buy a product or service. Now, that's great, because it takes away the doubt, it resolves the issue. So in the mind of the advertiser and the vendor. Now again, I have nothing wrong with that particular system. It's the way the world works. Goods and services are sold. It keeps people in employment and money in everyone's pockets. However, you need to be in control of yourself. Let's look at this image again. When you look at this cup, you look at the, the building, the structure that is on top of the cup. That is you. You are that emotional structure. That is your emotional well-being, your emotional being, the person who you are. And you need to be in control of that. Basically, you need to own who you are. You need to be aware of who you really are. You should not go to other people or to the external world and say, tell me who I am. Know who you are. I'm going to tell you an interesting story. And I'm going to show you this card while I tell you the story. It's not a new story. It's, it's not original. It's not mine. And there are a number of ways of interpreting it. But I'm going to give you my interpretation of it. It's a story that was written about 1900 years ago. And it uh, is called, or was called in the original works, it's part of uh, Christian tradition called the prodigal son and in this there was a father who had two sons the father said to the two sons who wants to take their inheritance from me now before I die or words that effect and the younger son said I'll take it give it to me so the younger son took his share of the money and went off away from the area that the father and the elder son, who'd stayed behind with his dad, no mention of any mother anywhere, while the younger son went off and proceeded over the next few years to spend all the money to get rid of all the inheritance with drinking and girls, having a great time, slurping wine off the buttocks of poor girls. Not such a bad idea if you've got all that money on one view. But here's the thing. At the end of the day, all his money was gone. He found that hanging around with, with hookers really kind of lost its importance. And when he lost his money, they lost interest in him. And he was reduced to tending pigs, which in his culture was a terrible disgrace because they didn't eat pork. They wanted to have nothing to do with pigs. And his job was to be the person who looked after pigs and feed them and what have you. And he had nothing to eat. He couldn't even eat the stuff that the, that the pigs ate. And so he thought, I want to return home. I want to come back. I want to come back 
and I'm happy to come back as a slave in my father's house. Because I assume as a slave he could at least get something to eat. But anyway, it then became apparent that the father found out about his son's desire and he was delighted. So delighted, in fact, that he said to the eldest son, Son, go and prepare the fatted calf. We'll have a feast because my son is coming back home. And the older brother, of course, is a little bit concerned by this and says, just, just a moment, Dad, would you prefer, would you please just give me an executive summary as to what's going on? And the father says, my son was dead. Now he is alive. Before he was lost, now he is found. And the son came back to great rejoicing. The elder brother couldn't understand it. The elder brother represents intelligence and thoughts. His thought was, well, you don't go off spending your money on hookers and enjoying yourself and what have you, but you use some sort of sensibility. But when we're in this life, remember, when you were born, you had enough and you are always enough. You are enough. You have everything inside you. The younger son discovered this. All those things that were important and which went away from him, they weren't him. They were illusory. They don't really ever exist. He didn't. He's still alive. They're all gone. And yet there he is. I think, and as I say, there are different interpretations as to what the story means. But here's an interpretation which I give it. The father with the two sons. You are the father. You are the father. You are whole. You have everything. And yet there's a part of you that goes out into the world and makes mistakes and has its heart broken and spends its time with, you know, if you want to say, with hookers and drinking and girls and, and enjoying itself and, and, and squandering things, having adventures, doing this, doing that. But there is a time that it becomes apparent to you that these things are actually not you. It's almost as if you need to prostitute yourself to find out what your true value is. And when you do understand your true value, you understand that although all these other things are great to have, although they're, 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 they're good fun and they're enjoyable, they don't define you. They are not you. And they don't tell you who you are because you are whole. It's only when you understand that you are whole and that you, you are in charge of this castle, which is you, your emotional being, your center, the, I suppose, the core of who you are, in some respects, the spirit or the soul of who you are, when you understand that that soul is absolutely complete, then you can put on a suit, if you like, and go out into the world knowing that I'm here, I'm presenting an image, I'm, I'm, uh, I've got a, uh, a, a persona that I am putting out to the world, but I own that persona. You're not trading it. You're not trying to get it from anybody. You're not exchanging it for anything. You're not paying for it and you're not buying it. It's you. You own that and you understand who you are. When you understand who you are and that you have everything in you as a person, complete, 
Because remember where you came from. Well, remember where you came from. Sure, you were born here, but where do you come from? Do you think that's a bad job? <laughs> it's impossible. It's not. You are complete. You are enough. When you understand that, that is the first stage to making progress on improving the way in which you look at the world. And we'll have a look at some of those things and ways to go about doing that next time. So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye for now.